I was born in Chicago. I'm the middle child of three brothers. My parents are Mexican immigrants. I predominantly grew up in a community called Little Village in the west side of Chicago, or as we call it in Spanish, La Villita. It is a predominantly Mexican immigrant community. One thing that growing up in Little Village has taught me and my parents have taught me is the importance of work ethic and how it doesn't matter where you come from, so you can work hard and, and make something for yourself. I have to be honest with you, I was probably one of the lucky ones because I had teachers that pushed me. I had a mentor who stay up late with me, filling out my applications. And until this day, she's my mentor. She still has supported me through college. She sends me like $50 every month to buy myself ice cream and buy myself food. She treats me like I'm her family. Like literally, she gains nothing from this and she just does it out of goodness of her heart. I've been very, very fortunate with the people that have come across in my life because um, I had a counselor that was pushing me to attend that college prep school. And I was like, no, I want to go to a neighborhood high school. It'll be much easier. And she was like, no, trust me, like you have the potential to do more. So I had to commute every day on train. Ironically, I lived right in front of a high school and my mom would always ask me like, why are you going all the way over there? Like, it makes no sense if you could just wake up like 10 minutes before class and run, run to school. But it was mostly for the resources. Unfortunately, there's a lot of inequity. Uh, oftentimes students have to go elsewhere to schools to find better opportunities. Like a little journey every day. Yeah, I, I miss that, but it, it was very hard because I never really had dinner with my parents throughout high school because I would get home like at 7, 8 p.m. So my mom always left the plate on the table and I would just always have to eat it up and then I'll just pretty much do work until two in the morning and then wake up at six to go to school. You know, I wrote it because the experience was just so new to me. Like I never really had anyone question my marriage like the way my dentist did, especially the way he implied that it was easier for students that were students of color and were first gen low income students. He implied that it was easier for us to get into schools like Stanford. I actually had a Stanford professor reach out and he kind of just was welcoming me to campus and he offered to pay for my braces. And I remember being like, yo, like, this is so weird, this is so random. Why would a Stanford professor want to pay for my braces? And I was like, you know what? He seems like a very nice guy. Let me meet him. Um, yeah, I ended up meeting him. He ended up being an amazing mentor of mine. And he did end up paying for my braces. And his name was Ben Barris, amazing guy. He was a Stanford medical neuroscientist. He was transgender, advocated for women's rights and trans rights. And I don't think I've ever met someone was such a big heart like that. And we would check in almost every month and have dinner and just talk. And he never really took credit for it. He was always very quiet about it. He was never the type to, to say that he did that for me. He was very much someone that made me uh, feel like I was part of campus and under, understood a lot of what I was going through. He was too good for this world. I don't think there's any other way to prove who Ben was. One of the things that I, like, I wanted to reiterate through this interview is that I didn't get here alone. I mean, I got here through a a lot of people's effort, support, and love. And I wanted to pay that forward. And I wanted to start paying it forward as early as I could. So I created uh, Chicago Latinx Scholars to be able to allow for students to essentially just share resources with one another. That's like the purpose of the group. I think it was more important for me because now I was at Stanford. Stanford has an immense amount of resources. I mean, I constantly get emails about scholarships, about jobs and things like that. So I was like, why can't we share these with people back home? And I think for me, it was recognizing that I had this amount of, amount of privilege and I wanted to make sure that I did something, that I like shared that knowledge, shared those resources with people back home. People need help. And if I could help one student apply to a scholarship or if I could share one scholarship with a student, then maybe that could help them go to college or maybe that could help them be able to achieve their goals. 